This week, robocallers get huge fines for spoofing phone numbers. 100,000 home routers are used in a Brazilian hacking scam that's not really a scam. Anyway, 85 reasons to update your Adobe PDF software. Nine NAS bugs open uh, that were found on Lenovo EMC and other platforms. Five major security updates for Chrome extensions, which is a welcome announcement from the folks at Google. And Twitter is banning the distribution of hacked materials ahead of the U.S. midterm elections. In our expert commentary, Sven Morgenroth of NetSparker joins us to talk about the Facebook hack. Which, uh, which Facebook hack? Well, you just have to stay tuned to find out. All that and more on this episode of Hack Naked News. This is Security Weekly. For security professionals, by security professionals. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show that brings you the security news each week. And despite popular belief, we do wear pants. It's Hack Naked News. The breach was huge news at the time. Linux monitoring tool. List of affected devices, you can check out the link in the show notes. Ars Technica is reporting that hackers have cracked the Nintendo Switch this week. Tracking people's locations and stuff like that. You'll want to be rolling out updates if you're using Lenovo hardware. Do you have a website, an external presence, employees, an office? Any of these things can be compromised and attacked. How are you defending your assets? Have you penetration tested your public assets? Start 2018 by taking a proactive approach to securing your vulnerable areas. Black Hills Information Security has been helping companies find their weaknesses since 2008. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com and see how they can help you sleep better at night. Welcome to Hack Naked News, episode 191 for October 2nd, 2018, just before DerbyCon. I'm sorry, I'm hiding behind my microphone. It's really bad placement. I apologize. You don't need to see my face anyway. Uh, so I am your host, Paul Asadorian, and I am broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island. Um, we do have a quick announcement. Uh, join us for our webcast with Domain Tools, how to analyze and investigate malicious JavaScript attacks on October 11th, 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, excuse me, securityweekly.com forward slash domain tools and register today if you want to learn how to de-obfuscate JavaScript. It'll be a lot of fun, I promise, if you're into that kind of thing. And now, the security news for this week. Robocallers have been slapped with huge fines because they're spoofing people's phone numbers. We need more of this, well, more of the cracking down on this, right? Uh, the calls, uh, and I quote from the article, the calls appear to come from unassigned phone numbers and phone numbers assigned to prepaid or burner phones, according to the FCC. The caller ID was spoofed in every one of the millions of calls making it impossible to identify who is actually calling. The FCC pointed to one poor soul whose phone number was hijacked in order to make those calls. The Arizona woman said she received more than five calls a day on her phone, all from coming from irate people complaining about the telemarketing calls they got from her phone number. So just when you thought you were having a bad day, there you go. 100,000 home routers have been recruited to spread a Brazilian hacking scam Again, don't be misled by the headline. This is not actually a scam. What it actually is, is attackers gaining unauthorized access to your home router. Now, this attack where they change your DNS servers has been around in the wild for 10 years and even predates, uh, even predates that. Uh, the first I saw of this style attack was actually in Mexico, uh, and it's still happening today. The article says the attackers were trying to get control of the target machines either by guessing the web admin password or through a vulnerable DNS configuration uh, CGI script. If they get control of that device, they change the router's DNS server to their own rogue machine. It's a timeless, ageless attack. And yes, it was a slow news week. So there you go. If you haven't updated your PDF software lately, here's 85 reasons to do so now because PDF readers have become such a popular target for email and web-based malware attacks, according to the article, which I completely disagree with. They say that users and admins alike would do well to test and install updates as soon as possible as exploit-laden PDFs have been, uh, exploit-laden PDFs have for more than a decade proven to be one of the most reliable ways to put malware on someone's machine, except that malware being distributed by PDF document is 
really kind of like 10 years ago, maybe five years ago. I think that most email protection solutions will spot a malicious PDF and oftentimes they don't really target an exploit. I think an office document is a far more popular and tried and true method as embedding macros inside of office documents uh, is very, very effective and often doesn't require that your, your software be vulnerable to a particular exploit, which I think it makes it more attractive to attackers. I have absolutely no data on hand to back that up. That is just my opinion. Feel free to, to write me, paul at securityweekly.com. We can debate it. Nine NAS bugs uh, have been uh, open to Lenovo EMC iOmega devices. And uh, so lots of steps here. I actually, uh, Jason Holocom was the, the researcher. Hi, Jason. Uh, awesome research. There are some steps um, that you have to take in order to successfully exploit this attack. Uh, a hypothetical attack would first include luring an, un, an authenticated NAS user of one of the devices to a specifically crafted website designed to steal the user's access token and a session cookie-like identifier called C parameter. So essentially, you have to be logged into your NAS device, then you have to visit a malicious site. So those, those, that's just the first two things. Then the next step in the attack after acquiring the NAS's uh, token is finding the static IP address of the NAS. Again, not impossible, but you'd have to do some brute forcing uh, to figure out what the IP address is. Um, I don't think you need to sound the alarm on this one. Uh, you should patch it, but I don't think it's a drop everything and patch as pulling this off is, is somewhat tricky, unless of course you're like our expert commentator today, Sven, in which case it's probably pretty easy. Uh, Google announces five major updates for Chrome extensions. Finally, some much needed controls for Chrome extensions. Chrome, of course, coming under fire this week, uh, last weekend, this week, for a, a number of reasons. One of the things is if you're logged into your Gmail, it keeps you logged in uh, to your browser via your credentials without asking you. Uh, there's been a lot of scrutiny over, over Chrome and, and concern, specifically with extensions as well. But now, in an upcoming version of Chrome, users will be able to control when and how Chrome extensions can access site data, allowing them to restrict access for all sites, then grant temporary access to a specific website when required, or do things like enable permissions for a specific set of websites or all sites. With Chrome 70 that will be released, Google will also start doing other things. There was a list of five that was just a couple. Uh, they will uh, per start performing a more in-depth review of extensions that are submitted to the Google Chrome Store uh, that use so-called powerful permissions. So they'll get some extra scrutiny for extensions that need probably, I would guess, higher level privileges or those that could be abused uh, to do harm. So again, there's five total, uh, including more in-depth reviews. Uh, I said that. I put that in there twice for some reason. I guess I thought it was important. Uh, Twitter has banned distribution of hacked materials ahead of its U.S. midterm elections. Now, Twitter already had rules in place that prohibited the distribution of hacked materials that contain private information or trade secrets. But after Monday's update, the platform review teams will also ban accounts that claim responsibility for a hack, making hacking threats or issue incentives to hack specific people and accounts. Now, Twitter have, has, of course, been so diligent about enforcing policies and ridding the social network of bad be Never mind. Never mind. And with that, we'll take a short break and come back with Sven to talk about the Facebook hack. Stay tuned. Today's determined attackers easily bypass even the most advanced network defenses. Trying to ramp up staff to detect their back doors can cost thousands of dollars and take months, even years. With Active Countermeasures AI Hunter, we enable junior analysts to detect even the most advanced back doors in a matter of hours. Sign up for a demo and purchase our product today by visiting activecountermeasures.com forward slash HNN. Active Countermeasures, make every analyst a hunter. Welcome back, everyone, to Hack Naked News. You missed it just during the break. There was a truck blaring its horn. Uh, anyway, we're here with Sven Morganroth from Netsparker, Netsparker, even. Sven, welcome to the program today. Hi, Paul. Thanks for having me. Yes, nice to have you, Sven, to talk about uh, the Facebook hack. We touched upon it briefly in Application Security Weekly yesterday. Um, but I'm really curious to get your take on this. I mean, we call it a hack, but if you could expand upon some of the details as to how I believe 90 million accounts uh, at last count uh, were affected. 
Well, um, 90 million accounts actually um, fed the aftermath of the whole um, attack because mm -hmm. their um, access tokens were invalidated. I think actually um, it affected 50 million um, people for sure. Uh, 50 million accounts yes, correct. and um, they were um, actually invalidating the tokens of uh, 40 million more accounts um, because they were subject of the US um, feature that was responsible for the leak and um, the, the bug was uh, rather interesting because it was um, actually kind of sophisticated um, they chained uh, three different um, security uh, bugs in order to um, to steal access tokens from from all these users and um, yeah so it um, it actually abused the fuse feature um, that uh, lets you view the um, your own account um, from the point of view of another uh, user yeah, that's a pretty popular feature. I use that in my our YouTube channel, for example, all the time as you're making changes to your page. Yeah, exactly. You can, you can do that. You can uh, check who uh, can see your posts and who can't. Like um, if, if you want to make a private uh, post only for a specific um, set of users. And yeah, um, that was responsible for the leak. And the bug was as follows. Um, you you could um, view your own profile from the um, point of view of another user, and uh, the feature should be read only, right? So um, you should only uh, view your own profile, but you shouldn't be able to post as this user. Uh, but there was a bug, and uh, you were allowed to post a video. Actually, I think. Um, as the other user. Now that is uh, bad enough um, on its own, but that uh, video uploader also um, exposed uh, um, an access token, which is like the second bug. And uh, that one was, um, so, so it's not a bug that it was exposed, but that it um, had the permissions of the mobile app actually, which are kind of, um, yeah, very permissive actually. And um, yeah, so um, that uh, the the token wasn't um, generated for your own account, but the account you viewed um, you, you wanted to look up. So it it actually allowed you to steal the access token of the user you wanted to look up. And um, yeah, so the the aftermath is quite. Um, uh, serious for, for Facebook. Um, they face a possible fine of, um, I think, I think $1.63 billion um, due to violations of the GDPR, the um, European, Union, uh, European Union's uh, general data privacy. Um, yeah. Um, Regulation. I regulation think. exactly think, yeah. <laughs> so um yeah th uh, and that is uh, kind of bad but um i think most of the people are wondering why that uh, breach even happened because facebook has a bug bounty program and uh, it's easy to think that as soon as you start such a program that um everybody who finds a bug will just report it yeah um but, but that's, that's what i was thinking case. i mean i you know i'm, I'm trying to figure out how much Facebook pays out for bug bounties. Um, I did find a Wired article from this year. This is in 2017. Um, Facebook's bug bounty paid an average of $1,900 per bug. Now, I'm not sure you said there was three uh, vulnerabilities, correct, that led to this attack. It, it's, it's interesting to speculate how much they would have gotten from that. Um, in total, Facebook has paid out like $1.9 million since they launched their bug bounty program. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, they've paid out more than $6 million to security researchers over the years. I, I think it just might have been uh, an economic decision. You know, when they found these vulnerabilities, they said, well, if Facebook's paying an average of 1900 we don't know how much we'd get, but we know we can get a lot more by hacking all these accounts and selling access to them or, you know, other such nefarious activities. What's your, what's your take on that, Sven? Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, these... Um uh, this is a decision you have to make, and um, 
for example, you you can with a bug bounty attract a certain set of hackers um, mm. that are willing to to search for vulnerabilities, report them to you, and uh, everything's fine. Uh, but but you will also um, you you can't you you can attract these white attackers, but you can't like keep away the black attackers, um, which which is uh, yeah. Uh, and and I mean that is that is a problem. Mm. Um, also, I, I think that uh, Facebook is not a very attractive uh, bug bounty target for lots of people, um, mostly because it's so um, yeah it's so popular and uh, a lot of people will search for um, f- search for bugs there. And uh, if you're a full time um, bug bounty hunter, uh, you. Um, it, it's probably not your priority to um, get the most prestigious targets like uh, Facebook, etc., but to actually make your living. And um, that is way harder on a site where um, more people uh, look at the actual bugs. And I think that will drive a lot of um, a lot of professional bug hunters with a uh, big set of uh, with a, with, a, um, with, a, uh, with with lots of skills. Um, that will drive them away to uh, easier targets, private programs where you can report your um, three uh, priority one bugs and uh, actually make some money instead of searching for hours for a $1,900 bug. Yeah, um, I, that's a great point, Sven. Um, I, I think the bug bounty program does uh, is flawed in that way in that the motivation of the person or people finding the bugs is financial gain. I think in, in most cases, I'm going to speak for every bug bounder out there, but I think there is a certain population that's like, I'm going to make a, a living at this or I'm going to, I want to make money. And therefore, their choices as to who to target and what types of bugs to find are driven by the economics, not by the most impactful to the organization hosting the bug bounty program. Excuse me, as, as Facebook has, might have experienced, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, also, I think there there's some some um, other um, problems with that. Uh, uh, some some stuff that went awfully wrong there, uh, but because um, if if you think about it, um, that feature is uh, looks very very uh, prone to bugs. Actually, mm. like you can impersonate another user, uh, even though it's in a very limited uh, limited scope. And uh, you, you can only view a profile as another user. But uh, if, if I would do uh, some kind of uh, source code review or any pen test or anything, uh, that, that would certainly be a focus area, I think. And uh, therefore, it's very uh, strange why um, nobody found that bug earlier. It was um, se- uh, there since at least uh, July, uh, July t- uh, 2017, if I remember that correctly. And um, yeah, I think uh, it could have been prevented certainly if if, uh, if somebody just looked hard enough, even though it was uh, kind of sophisticated. Sure. Uh, anything? Uh, any other comments? Sorry, Sven, on on this story. Um, no, that's about it. <laughs> Awesome. Sven, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for listening and watching this edition of Hack Naked News. We'll see you next time.